Hello, my name is Greco, el teacher bilingue. Today, I have something truly special lined up for you. A deep dive into the life and works of one of the most enigmatic poets in English literature, Emily Dickinson. La vida de Emily Dickinson es tan intrigante como su poesía. Nació el 10 de diciembre de 1830 en Amherst, Massachusetts, y creció en una familia prominente y acomodada. Su padre, Edward Dickinson era un abogado exitoso, tesorero del Amherst College y miembro de la Cámara de Representantes de los Estados Unidos. Emily Dickinson displayed an early interest in literature and education. She attended Amherst Academy, where she received a classical education that included studies in literature, botany, geology, Latin, and history. Despite her passion for learning, she was known for her reclusive nature, preferring the company of books and close friends over large social gatherings. Emily's reclusive nature remains a subject of speculation among scholars and historians. There is no definitive answer, but several factors may have contributed to her preference for a secluded life. Health Issues It is widely believed that Dickinson suffered from various health problems, although the exact nature of her illnesses remains uncertain. Some theories suggest that she might have had severe migraines or other chronic illnesses that could have limited her ability to engage in social activities. Tragedias personales Dickinson experimentó varias pérdidas personales, incluida la muerte de amigos muy cercanos y miembros de la familia. Estas pérdidas podrían haberla llevado a retirarse del mundo como una forma de enfrentar el duelo y evitar más dolor emocional. Creative Freedom Dickinson's seclusion allowed her the solitude and mental space necessary for her writing. She could explore her thoughts and emotions deeply without the distractions of social obligations. For her, the creative process might have been best nurtured in isolation. Social Anxiety Some scholars speculate that Dickinson may have suffered from social anxiety, a condition that can make social interactions uncomfortable or distressing. Avoiding social distractions might have been a way for her to manage her anxiety. Nonconformity Dickinson was known to be a nonconformist, both in her lifestyle choices and her poetry. Rejecting societal norms, including the expectation of socializing, could have been a conscious decision aligned with her independent spirit. Mystery and Privacy Dickinson was a highly private individual, valuing her personal space and independence. Her seclusion might have been a deliberate choice to maintain the mystery surrounding her life and work, allowing her to control her own narrative. Her interest in poetry began at a young age. She was deeply influenced by the Romantic literary movement, which emphasized the individualism, emotion, and a deep connection with nature. As a teenager, she started composing her poems, exploring themes of love, death, nature, and spirituality. It is believed that her introspective nature and keen observation skills greatly contributed to her unique perspective in poetry. A lo largo de su vida, Dickinson mantuvo una vasta correspondencia con familiares y amigos a través de cartas, las cuales a menudo contenían versos poéticos, mostrando su talento incluso en la comunicación casual. Now, let's analyze her poem number 260, titled, I'm Nobody, Who Are You?, which goes like this. I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? Then there's a pair of us. Don't tell, they'd advertise, you know? How dreary to be somebody. How public, 
like a frog, to tell one's name the live long June to an admiring bog. This poem can be interpreted as a commentary on the pressures of societal expectations and the loss of privacy that comes with fame or recognition. Dickinson, known for her reclusive lifestyle, might be expressing her preference for anonymity and solitude. The poem also explores the genuine connections that can be formed outside the public eye, where individuals can be true to themselves without the constraints of social judgments. Además, el poema plantea preguntas sobre la naturaleza de la identidad y las máscaras que las personas usan en diferentes contextos sociales. Al adoptar la identidad de nadie, nobody, Emily cuestiona las nociones convencionales de importancia y destaca el valor de la autenticidad y la conexión humana genuina. Let's analyze now another one of her poems. This one is number 976 and is titled Death is a Dialogue Between, which goes like this. Death is a dialogue between the spirit and the dust. Dissolve, says death. The spirit, sir, I have another trust. Death doubts it, argues from the ground. The spirit turns away, just laying off for evidence an overcoat of clay. In this poem, Dickinson delves into the mystery of death and the separation of the spiritual and physical aspects of human existence. The dialogue format highlights the ongoing conversation between life and death, emphasizing the continuity of existence beyond the mortal realm. The spirit's assertion of having another trust implies a belief in an afterlife or a spiritual journey beyond death. Asimismo, la utilización por parte de Dickinson de la personificación, la metáfora y el lenguaje conciso permiten a los lectores reflexionar sobre las profundas preguntas que rodean la mortalidad y la naturaleza del alma. La brevedad y profundidad del poema invitan a los lectores a reflexionar sobre el diálogo perdurable entre la vida, la muerte y lo que yace más allá, convirtiéndolo en una exploración fascinante de la condición humana. Her rhyme style Emily Dickinson's rhyme style was varied and innovative, reflecting her unique approach to poetry. While she did use traditional rhyming patterns, she often experimented with slant rhyme, also known as near rhyme or off rhyme. Slant rhyme occurs when the correspondence between the sounds is close but not exact, creating a subtle and sometimes dissonant effect. Dickinson's use of slant rhyme allowed her to explore unconventional and nuanced connections between words, expanding the possibilities of expression in her poetry. Her innovative approach to rhyme, combined with her mastery of imagery and metaphor, contributed to the distinctiveness of her poetic voice. In addition to her use of rhyme, Dickinson was also known for her distinctive punctuation style, particularly her use of dashes and unconventional capitalization as we could see in the poems we just analyzed. These stylistic choices added to the unique rhythm and flow of her poems, further setting her work apart from the poetry of her time. Unfortunately, Only a handful of Dickinson's poems were published during her lifetime, and those were usually heavily edited to fit conventional poetic styles of the time. It wasn't until after her death in 1886, at the age of 55, that her complete works of over 1,800 poems were published, revealing the depth and brilliance of her poetic talent. However, Emily Dickinson's influence goes far beyond her poetry. 
Her contributions have shaped the way we think about language, encouraging us to embrace brevity and precision in our expression. Even in the digital age of hashtags and character limits, her legacy lives on, reminding us of the beauty that can be found in simplicity. Por lo tanto, ya sea que seas un ávido entusiasta de la poesía o simplemente alguien buscando apreciar la elegancia del lenguaje, la obra de Emily Dickinson es un tesoro esperando a ser explorado. Ah, y por cierto, si te lo estás preguntando, sí, su trabajo ha sido traducido a muchos idiomas, y entre esos el español, y ha sido hecho con mucho cuidado y detalle para no perder esa esencia maravillosa de su estilo. Dive into her poems, en español o en English, and feel the emotions she carefully crafted. Let her words inspire you, and who knows, they might ignite your own creative journey too. Hey, thanks for watching. Adiós.